So I'm not exactly going out on a limb here with this take, but Josh Rosen is a bust. I mean, he just is. Uh, he was drafted with a top 10 pick by the Cardinals, and it has not worked out well for the Cardinals or for the Miami Dolphins who traded him uh, for him with a second round pick. I find him very interesting. Um, there is a narrative that the only reason he was bad was because he was in bad situations, but that is a false narrative. That is not true. Uh, and I'm going to get into really all of what has happened so far with Rosen. And we'll start things off with this play. Uh, this was in his first appearance in an NFL uniform, and it was crazy. If you remember this, uh, they were down late in the fourth quarter. They basically had a two-minute drill to see if they could come back uh, and win the football game. And they entered Josh Rosen. Sam Bradford was still healthy, still playing, but they decided to put Rosen in instead uh, which is just a wild thing to do. He was facing this uh, situation. It's a fourth down and five. Uh, it's a cover two man that Chicago is in. And uh, the two receivers on the top of the screen are running those two routes right there with a uh, you know, number one receiver running deep. Number two receiver is going to cut towards the sideline. That's where Rosen is going to look. It's not a terrible uh, thing to look towards in this play. But after the ball is snapped, what you're going to notice is that uh, there's no way of really knowing if your receiver is going to get open. But Rosen is in trouble, so he basically just has to throw one up. It is fourth down, so it's better than nothing. Uh, and so he does throw one up, and it gets intercepted. Again, it was fourth down. It would have been better if he just swatted the ball away because uh, it would have helped you field position-wise. But uh, at the end of the day, that was kind of the dagger, but it's a dagger you can live with, you know? Uh, it was obviously a very tough situation. I think the idea was, hey, let's throw him into a really tough situation so no one will blame him if things go wrong because, you know, I mean, no one's going to blame you for not being able to come back in that situation. Uh, but you have an opportunity where if you do come back and win, then everyone gives you praise. I think the reason why so many people thought that Josh Rosen was still going to be good uh, and even after he left the Cardinals, people were saying it was too early to give up on him, myself included. I, at the time, did not like the move. It was one of my worst takes I've had on this YouTube channel. Uh, but, uh, you know, there's reasons why I and many others sort of still thought that he had some talent. And it was a play like this, where it's a cover three zone. Larry Fitzgerald is going to run into a gap in coverage. And as you notice, after the ball is snapped, it's working out okay. You know, not a huge window, but... There is a window, especially because, you know, the uh, the players closer to the middle of the field have moved somewhat far in. So, you know, now he can throw it a little bit higher. Fitzgerald can go up and get it. Uh, but also look at this throw, and it's a very quick and accurate throw, and you can't get much better than that. And he would show flashes like this. In fact, his highlight real level plays were just as good as anybody else's. I mean, if you just looked at his highlights, it would be a lot shorter, but it would still look very impressive. Uh, like, not even on those plays where he's, you know, doing these medium difficulty plays at a uh, very impressive level, but he would also have these high difficulty level of plays that he would still be able to complete. This is an example of that, where what's going to happen is that uh, it's going to be zone coverage, and again, uh, it's going to be Fitzgerald who's going to be running deep right here. So again, definitely having Fitzgerald helped him, uh, you know, the, that was kind of the only thing that helped him, but still... Uh, and after the ball is snapped, he's going to fake a handoff, but there's pressure, so he has to run up, and he does want to make this throw, but he's, you know, off balance right here. However, he's going to step into it, make a throw very deep down the field, and Fitzgerald is able to make the catch, and they're able to get a big conversion, and these aren't just, you know, the two good plays he had of the season. He did this. He did this with some consistency, even, uh, especially in the preseason, I thought. In his preseason with Miami, he looked great at times, but... The problem really was never about his arm talent too much. I mean, maybe a little, and I'll get into that in a second, but a lot of his problems would be shown on a play like this, where it's going to be a cover three zone, uh, and he has a receiver running that is going to get into a gap in coverage, uh, you know, if everything works out as it's supposed to on paper. And after the ball is snapped, you notice that it's kind of similar to that situation that I showed you earlier, uh, the play with Larry Fitzgerald getting into a gap in coverage, but the difference is, you know, as I pointed out, the players who were covering the middle of the field were much further in, whereas on this play, they're not further in at all. They're, you know, one of them is right next to uh, the receiver, and another's pretty close, so uh, this is definitely a much more risky throw for Rosen to make. However, it's third down, and Rosen wants to make something happen, so he's going to throw one there anyways. However, 
it just gets picked off, and it's just not a great decision. And that's really his biggest problem. Not necessarily throwing interceptions, although to some degree that, but also just decision-making in general. He's not a very good decision-maker at all. And I think the worst example of it is the way it hurts his offensive line. Um, You know, I think it's kind of... I don't think it's a coincidence that when he was with Arizona, they had by far and away the worst offensive line in the league, and then he left and the offensive line looked okay. And then when he was with Miami, the offensive line looked like the worst in the league and then looked much better once uh, Fitzpatrick stepped in. Like, take a look at this play. There's only three receivers running routes. Everyone else is blocking on this play. Uh, They're running those routes right there. And so, really, the kind of, the way that Rosen got officially broken and teams knew exactly what to do and Rosen had no real answer for it was just by blitzing him and blitzing him a lot. Uh, So, like, on this play, uh, a Chargers defensive back is going to be blitzing Rosen along with someone else as well. So, uh, it's kind of a heavy blitz here, but he's going to run over and he's going to try to get the Rosen. And what's going to end up happening is that he's going to get straight through to Rosen, but there was a good block. Uh, the halfback picked this up well, was able to make that block, so nicely done by him. So, actually, the blitz was picked up, so, you know, that's good. So, there's only five defensive players who are back in the, in coverage at this point. Uh, obviously, you only have three receivers running, so that's still not a numbers advantage, but one of the defensive players is all the way at the 40-yard line, whereas The other one is uh, a safety who is deep, so you have a couple of one-on-one matchups, but if you look at the three receivers, I mean, no no one's really winning their one-on-one matchups, so okay, fine, throw the ball away, right? That's what you should do. Maybe you could try to force something, but ideally, you would just want to throw the ball away. However, Rosen then decides he's going to try and run for it, and it's a terrible idea, and he gets sacked. Again, You know, the offensive line did their job there. I mean, there was a pretty heavy blitz that they were able to pick up. That's not easy to do at all. And, you know, uh, I think a lot of times you wouldn't see them do it. But on a play like this, they were able to pick up the blitz, but Rosen was the one who screwed it up. Josh Rosen was sacked 16 times last year, and Ryan Fitzpatrick was was sacked 40 times last year. But if you look at the differences in snap totals, Rosen got sacked exactly one out of every eight snaps he took, whereas Fitzpatrick got sacked one out of every 14 and a half snaps he took. Rosen was almost twice as likely to get sacked as Fitzpatrick was, and they played with, you know, mostly the same offensive line. You could argue that, well, you know, the offensive line played together longer later in the season, so that should account for some of it, and that is fair, but I still think that that difference kind of goes to show a big part of it was Rosen just not knowing how to protect himself. And one more thing, while Rosen's arm talent was, it's NFL-level arm talent, It also isn't like Patrick Mahomes. It isn't even like a Jameis Winston where Winston, you know, not the highest IQ player, makes some uh, mistakes and definitely will let the ball get away from him sometimes in terms of accuracy, but also has an absolute cannon. You know, Rosen's arm talent, it's kind of just all right. Like on this play, it's a cover three zone and he has a receiver that's going to get into a pretty perfect gap in this uh, coverage, especially with the way that this uh, defensive back who's in charge of covering deep closest to the bottom of the screen is going to be pretty far deep. It's going to work out pretty well, and after the ball is snapped, you notice that he gets easily open. I mean, you know, you talk about there being in certain throws, there's a mailbox you have to fit the ball through. Well, this is almost like hit the mail truck to make sure that you're able to get this uh, completion. However, he still underthrows it by a pretty good margin that results in an interception. And that's just kind of the thing where it's like, if you're someone that has some, you know, giant cannon of an arm uh, and you're super accurate or, you know, either or at least, there's going to be someone who says, well, maybe let's give you another opportunity. Uh, But when you don't really have that and you're struggling so much in the IQ game, I mean, at a certain point, people are probably not going to give you another shot. He's just someone that's incredibly difficult to win with, which is why when Miami decided to move on from him and go to a 37-year-old guy who's been, you know, on every team in the league, people still weren't really that mad at it because at the end of the day, it kind of just came to the realization that Rosen was just never going to be the answer. And it's unfortunate. At least that's what I think. That's what I've seen on tape. I don't know. Is there anyone here who thinks that Rosen actually could be good if he was in a better situation? I just don't, and I think that sometimes the situations he's been in have looked worse because of how 
uh, bad he is personally. But maybe you guys disagree. So let me know if you do disagree in the comments below. Or if you do agree. Either way, I uh, always love hearing from you. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.